the brain-body connection. I'm really hoping that what I have to share with you today will help you to make 10 little tweaks that will improve your physical foundations for optimal brain performance. Research shows that it's better to change 10 things by 1% than change one thing by 10%. Just by sheer value of the fact that trying to change one thing so much can be so hard that you end up giving up. If, however, you pick 10 small things, tweaks to make to your health and well-being, you're much more likely to see success and get the cumulative effect of all of those things that you do. So for me, it really boils down to rest, fuel, hydrate, oxygenate, and simplify. Rest means adequate length and quality of sleep. Now, human brains, 98 to 99% of them anyway, need to sleep for seven to nine hours per night. This is because there's a very active cleansing process that goes on in the brain overnight, flushing out the toxins from our metabolism, from stress, from processed food, from alcohol, antibiotics, etc. And cleaning out those pathologies like um, beta amyloid plaques and tangles and tau proteins that build up to form the symptoms of dementing diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's later in life. So you do have to take a really long-term view on this, and it's quite hard to identify as the older person that we'll one day be. So it's important to think about the day-to-day -day differences that not sleeping enough can make. If you have any sleep disruption overnight, you're operating effectively with an IQ loss of five to eight points the next day. Now, for most people, this won't be noticeable, but if you lose a whole night's sleep through stress, travel, or sickness, it actually, in population norm studies, lowers the IQ uh, by one standard deviation, which for all of us would mean that we are at the level of a learning disability. And I really notice this in myself when I'm jet lagged, for example. So keep an eye on your sleep. If you don't have enough sleep for four days in a row, you build up a debt of sleep that you can't make up for by napping or lying in at the weekends. Try to remember with sleep, you can always be in debt, but you can never be in credit. However, having said that, it's not healthy for all sorts of physical reasons, like cardiovascular risk, to sleep for more than nine hours per night. Fuel. Fuel for the brain is basically coming from a nutrition-dense diet which gets broken down into simple molecules called glucose, but it doesn't mean that we should be eating sugary foods or refined foods. To eat for your brain, you really need to be having lots of good fats, so the oily fish like salmon and mackerel, the good oils like olive oil, avocado oil, and even eating olives and avocados. Both from the fat point of view and the micronutrient point of view, including lots of nuts and seeds in your diet, and then eating all of those leafy greens and the good hydrating salads and fruits like cucumber and melon. You actually retain more water from hydrating foods than you do from just drinking water. If you're really trying to take on some new learning, make a big behaviour change, and I'll go into this in detail in the next section on neuroplasticity, then an additional benefit is eating dark foods like dark berries, blueberries, blackberries, um, dark beans like black beans or kidney beans. The good news is that good quality dark chocolate over 80% and good quality coffee can also contribute to this. Hydration. The brain is mostly made up of water and we also need enough water in the system to hydrate and lubricate the chemical and electrical messages that pass between the neurons and the neural pathways of our brain and body. So to work out how much water you need to be drinking, it's half a litre per day for every 15 kilos of your body weight. So work out that, what that is for you and how you're going to incorporate that into your day. Now, if you're well short of that, I don't recommend that you suddenly start drinking the full amount from tomorrow. But if you build up slowly over two weeks, you won't notice any differences in terms of needing to go to the bathroom all the time. And you'll feel better in terms of your memory, concentration and focus, and you'll also see a difference in your skin and hair. So what's not to like? 
Oxygenation. Oxygenation is basically exercise and not being sedentary, but it's also breathing in a really good way. If you're under constant stress, then it's easy to start breathing rapidly, shallow breathing, or even breath holding or breathing through your mouth. What we really need to be doing is breathing through our nose, breathing about six to 12 breaths per minute, and making sure that we're breathing really deeply to oxygenate the blood supply that goes to the brain and all the way around the body. So a breathing practice, such as you might find on Living Ashram, or just paying attention to your breath and making sure that you're not too sedentary during the day and that you're either getting five to 10,000 steps every day or you're making sure that you get up to 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week. It's also super important that you choose an exercise that you actually enjoy because this makes a difference in the brain. So when you drag yourself to do some exercise that you don't enjoy, you get the benefits of oxygenation but when you do an exercise that you really love, you also release those good endorphins and, and growth factors in the brain called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Simplification. Simplification essentially means two things. It means mindfulness practices, like all the things you'll find at Living Ashram, but it also means reducing some of the unnecessary choices that you have in life. You essentially wake up after a good night's sleep with a bucket of resources that you're using up every time you make a decision. So from little decisions like what should I wear, what should I eat, what should the children wear and eat, you're using up resources that you might need later for bigger or more important decisions. So having meal plans for the week, having a formula for your wardrobe really helps reduce some of those decisions that drain your brain power unnecessarily. Equally, if you are under a lot of stress, that bucket of resources has a slow leak in it, which is draining your, re your ability to think and make decisions during the day. So again, from a root level up, whole human approach to health and well-being, make sure that you're addressing the causes of any stress in your life. And as an additional tip, try to maintain consistent sleeping and waking times, because this has an extra benefit on top of just making, your, making sure you're getting enough sleep.